Now, what do these people have in common? Can you imagine what they do for a living? Some of them look fairly stern and not very happy, so perhaps they don't get much fun out of it. But tonight, we're going to talk about some of the people, and just a very few here, who are finding it difficult to get started in the world of music. Now, I think it's time to start the show on this very serious program. Roll titles. Late on a Friday night once again, and tonight, the music business. With us in the audience are some of the top people from some of the top record companies, some of the people from some of the independent companies. We have three musical acts on the show tonight as well, and nothing else. So if you found it difficult, and a lot of people do, let's, uh, let's look at this. These are just some of the people who, during the course of the last few weeks, have written in, sending tapes, letters... And uh, they hope to get on the show. With us in the audience are some very interesting people. Let me talk first of all to Chris Wright. Chris uh, founded Chrysalis Records. Right. Right. And uh, are considered now, Chris, one of the most influential people in the music business. Well, I don't know. If you say so, I doubt it. Is it as easy for people to get a start today as it was maybe 20 or 30 years ago? I think it, it can be. It just, it's just the avenues are slightly different and you've got to go about it a different way. But, you know, if, if uh, you look at the charts and look at even the Brit show, there's a lot of new artists still coming through. They may be coming through different ways and, and different forms, but it's still possible for new artists to get off the ground. Sending tapes like this to record companies and to TV shows and things like that, is it a good idea? I think it's very difficult to get a, 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 a contract with a record company through sending tapes through the post. I think the number of artists that get a record deal that way is very, very limited. So how do they get a start? Well, you've got to start somehow. It's, it's better that you, you get a, you know, an A&R man to spot you in a pub or a club, or even better still, if you can get the interest of a lawyer. A lawyer's got much more, uh, it's got much more you know, chance of getting you a record deal by dealing directly with a record company than you as, an, as a totally undiscovered artist. Now, let me got. just go through that again. So, uh, a solicitor or a lawyer yeah. is going to be more useful than an A&R man. I'm afraid it's true. Is there an A&R man in the house tonight? There is, over here. Let me, uh, let me go over here. Oh, you've got the, the microphone, that's okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, are I'm you a solicitor as well? Maybe you are, I don't know. No, I'm a producer as well, but uh, uh, I think what Chris is saying is that if you've got a connection, yes, I don't think it has to be a lawyer, but uh, speaking as someone who has a small label as well, Mauve Records, my name's Mike Howlett, and I have a label called Mauve Records, and uh, we're releasing our, you know, our first artist on uh, Monday uh, called Jay Fisher, and he came to me through my wife's goddaughter, so, yes, that, you know, you, it helps to know somebody, but I get hundreds of tapes in and, and I listen to them and I listen for songs. If I hear a good song, then I check the artist out. Where I think it's uh, the A&R person comes into it, they, I think it does work to send the tapes in because Chris they says, do get listened to. Chris says get a, a lawyer. Presumably you, you need a lawyer because you need a contract before you go to a record company. Well, you don't need the contract first, but the lawyers are very good A&R men in their own right. I know mm. that sounds strange to say that, but I'm talking about lawyers that... that that would be capable of, of holding down a decent job in a record company. They're not sort of the, 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 identi the, you know, the idea of a lawyer that you know, your viewers might have. This is somebody that is, you know, maybe wears jeans and a T-shirt. A, a, a special a, music exactly, lawyer. Right, exactly. Okay. And I mean, in, in America, some record companies will not take unsolicited tapes. Uh -huh. They will only take tapes from lawyers because unsolicited tapes can cause problems. Our, people can call up afterwards and claim that they've had their songs ripped off, that other artists already signed to the to the label have covered the songs and you know it, it's 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 a bit of a problem and overall the percentage of of major artists that have had their careers started through sending a tape to a record company i think you'd find is very very small okay chris now there's a guy behind you and I, i'll come over here you were smiling a bit there do you agree with what chris said or not um well not particularly no i'll, I'll hold it you talk from there that's fine <laughs> okay um well, I, my name's Tony Byrne, and I work in promotions. I do radio and TV promotions. And it, what you find more and more, like with the Brits this year, the, the, 
a lot of the bands who are breaking through are on independent labels. Now, the Brits, apparently, this year was better than it's ever been before, is that right? Only according to Music Week, which is the sort <coughs> of puppy dog of the record industry. <laughs> Well, I looked at some of the facts and figures, and I couldn't really make head nor tail of them, but basically, since about 1975, <coughs> uh, record sales, or sales of music, because they're sold in different formats now, but sales of music hasn't changed very much. No, well, you see, records have become a lot more expensive, but that doesn't, and, and that is why the actual figures are, are still high. Mm. In terms of units, they're a lot lower. I mean, a single today costs about four pounds. But the thing is, as well, though, that it takes only about three or four thousand record sales to get into the bottom of the charts, is that right? Laurie J, you, uh, you've you been producing records long enough? Sort of long enough. Yes? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know how long things take. I'm told now it's a week, and the whole build-up for this record is a week, and depending how high you go, we just had a Ruby Turner record last week, which went in at 39. <clears throat> Every independent station was on it. We couldn't get the most important one, uh -huh. and uh, we didn't go higher. But, but the, the problem, the thing that I've just heard from Chris, who I think we met a long while ago, and he was a music man. When you left college, I remember you managed Reparata and the Delrons. I remember it in, in one of my clubs. Oh, you remember? We managed other people as and well, like Jethro Tull. Absolutely Tull correct. But Reparata was ten years the after. beginning for you and. Terry, if I so, OK, I thank you for the history lesson, Laurie, no, but, no, back, but to the, back to the music hearing, business at the moment. I mean, what hearing I'm Hearing his statement about... Were you concerned about that? ...is the way in. It, as a manager, I, I can't answer that one. You're upset about that, are you? Absolutely. Yeah. OK, uh, now... I'm absolutely. talking about new artists that need a lawyer. I mean, if, you, if an artist has got a manager already, that, yeah. that manager's got, got his own uh, contacts. I mean, what you basically need is the need, you need somebody that can get a meeting about your career with somebody of importance in a record company of, of okay, some let me, substance. Let me go to Lee John. Eric, I, I, just before I come to you, Eric, because I know you'll be talking a lot later. Uh, Lee John is here with us in the front. Now, Lee, you, you have got a deal at the moment or not? I've got a publishing deal, but as an artist that's been going for many years, I yeah. don't have a deal, but I will be looking for a deal. But I'm not interested in this country because... And as a black performer, you don't get that kind of support over here. You know, like a lot of people have said that a lot more, if you're a black performer now, if you're into rap or if you're into some of the, the new stuff, you can get a deal like tomorrow. No, I think if you've recorded over a period of, like in England, they, they treat artists like, uh, you know, once you've had your period, that's it. You, you can't know, come you back. You can't come back. In America, you have established black artists that you see time and time again. And like, you know, they, they talk about, um, say the Michael Jacksons and whoever, you know, and all that kind of stuff, Aretha Franklin. But, you know, we have a, 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 a period of reggae artists over here, we've mm. got jazz artists over here. You talk about the Brit Awards, there's no car category. You wouldn't believe there's a strong effort of reggae in this country by looking at the Brit Awards. There's reggae, there's soul, there's there's dance, there's well, all these categories, and they don't place it in the Brit Awards. When I looked at the Brit Awards, and uh, okay, I, uh, perhaps I'm being a bit cynical, I felt it was a uh, 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 TV program designed uh, for television rather than for the music business and to, to sort of show us what perhaps people in the record industry think we should be liking. Well, I know for a fact Sting's going to get an award. That's, and a lot of people feel the same way. You know he's going to get an award. And when we saw What's-His-Face, um, Van Morrison <laughs> getting an award, I thought, who? I mean, you know, he's been there's around. Some good but music, though. Yeah, Just he's because he's good, old, he's, is that no, any no, reason no, not to no, like but it? No, 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 there's still a lot of artists that have been around. You know, and it's coming up as well. I'm not, there's a lot yeah. of the young artists around. I mean, the point that we're talking about where you have to get a lawyer to get, uh, to get a deal sounds really heavy to a band that's just out there doing gigs and just getting themselves together. I mean, like, you hear lawyer in, in yeah. to a young artist out there, it sounds like big time, like how, how they, you know, first you've got yeah, okay. to meet the lawyer, you've got to get money to right. see him in the first place. Is it, do you think generally, before we, we take a break in a moment, is it worth still getting into the music business or is it just too much aggravation? Yeah. I mean, generally, do people think it's worth doing? To be honest, on the money side, it's not really worthwhile, to be honest. It's not? No, because... Can you um, tell us who you band, work for and who you are? I'm in a band, Rufus Stone. Right. Um, I mean, we've spent a fortune on tapes, recording, um, general sort of pro production of tapes. Yeah. Um, and photographs and that sort of thing. 
And to be honest, we've really got nowhere. And it just takes years and years, really. Yeah, OK. I mean, I'm going to come to Tony Blackburn in a moment and uh, because Tony thinks it's a lot easier now. And I think Eric, sitting next to him, they think it's a lot easier to get into the business now because there's so much more in the way of an outlet. There are so many more radio stations. There are so many more uh, record companies, be they small independents uh, or not. Um, is it easy? I don't know. We're going to come back in a moment and do that. Before we do, we have to go to the competition because, of course, we have to make some money to uh, keep this program on the air. So uh, keep that thought in your mind, Tony and Eric. Uh, the winner from last week's competition was Susan Jacobs, or I think it was the week before last, uh, who's on her way to Mallorca. Susan comes from Brighton. Well done to Susan. This week's competition, your chance to win a holiday for two people to the island of Kos, uh, which must be taken before the 15th of June. And uh, that's good because there'll be no screaming kids there uh, and you'll have a good time and you should be uh, ringing this number as many times as you can because listen why pay for a holiday when you can get one from us free hmm? now the question is what is the name of the British Music Awards difficult one this on this sort of program but uh, you'll have to tax you'll have to tax your memory for this 0891 007 is the number and there it is on the screen is it a the Grammys B the Brits or C the rock and pop awards and you can call that number until midnight on Sunday. Now, we're here, we're talking about the music business tonight, so stay tuned if you've uh, just joined us, and if you wanted to get into the music business, if you think it's almost impossible, we've got some top people from the record companies here. Let's see what happens as we go on. We're going to have some music now. This is a young lady we had on the show a few weeks, maybe it was a couple of months ago. It, uh, was it, was it, when was it? I can't remember. It wasn't long ago, anyway. And uh, we thought she was great. I think as yet she hasn't actually got a deal, but who knows. So please, would you welcome, singing Susie's Place, Lindsay Morgan. Now my head is spinning I got a feeling in my heart that life's about to hit me Straight on, straight on, it's going straight on All the birds in the trees are singing Saying do it for us, ain't doing it for the ones In bed, sleep and dream of all the times They should have, but they never did Dream of it's going straight on, it's going straight Cigarette smoke, you're getting in my hair, I can smell you on my clothes Oh, I need an empty space, I want to be the dawn, seeing in the day oh, But I know where I'll find you next, you'll be out on the street Fighting for the sake of it, scream on, dream on, it's going straight
That was great. Now this this must be this must be the most difficult audience <laughs> to sing in front of. Well, yes is the word you want to say. Yes, yes it's a it's very word, difficult yeah, audience because yeah. they don't give very much, yeah, you see. No. But you've had you've had a you had a record deal some years ago and they never released any records, did they? Well, I had a publishing deal. Mm -hmm. I was published by Warner Chapels, but I didn't sign I didn't sign the record side of it, so I don't know. I publishing's different. Publishing is it still tough? After. Well, I'm still here and I'm still unsigned, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't I disagree that with the, what the guy was saying about money it's mm. difficult when you haven't got money behind you obviously but when you write and you write and you have to write then you keep on writing mm. so it's something you, you have to do it. but nobody's well never mind somebody tonight <laughs> you never know Lindsay thank you very much indeed yeah. that's lovely Lindsay Morgan ladies and gentlemen Okay, now, the, uh, just before we go to the break, that very important competition which could get you that wonderful holiday for two people for one week in the island, on the island, around the island of Cos. All you have to do is answer this one simple question, and that is, what is the name of the British Music Awards? Coming up on the screen, there you are, three possibilities. There could be the uh, Grammys, the Brits, or the Rock and Pop Awards, 0891 900 007, and you can ring that number until midnight on Sunday. Huh? Music business tonight. Let's go before we go back to uh, Tony and Eric. As I said uh, before, we heard from Lindsay. Chris, do you, I mean Lindsay, different? And how, how should Lindsay progress? As uh... well, she wasn't different enough, I don't think. But she did. She did sing it very well. Pretty good voice. Not not anything out of the ordinary. Well crafted song, but I don't think it was a hit. I think most people probably agree with me. The song wasn't a hit, and unfortunately, especially in England, it has to be a hit. I think actually. She'd probably have more chance of getting a deal in the States, and she even sounded a bit American as well. That's a, a problem over here, though, isn't it? Because a lot of people are finding it very difficult. I mean, what, what makes somebody that would come to your company, Chris, and you saw them, what would... I know it's difficult for you to explain mm. exactly what, mm. but what, I mean, I, I think Lindsay's great. I think she has an, an unusual style in singing, yeah. and I think if she was given the the chance she would have hit records well the problem is is it just down to you or is it no it's not she's when if she makes a single that single's got to get into the charts it's got to get played on you know all of the yeah. top radio stations even though and very few people buy singles well though. that's the whole point you see the kind of people that would like that song mm. and like her kind of music and she's probably got other songs mm. and she may have better songs she may not think they're better but they may be better songs a producer could probably work with them and make a good record out of them but for her kind of music, it's very difficult to get those, the kind of people that would like that music to go and buy it as a seven-inch single. Because it's not. It's, there's no singles market for that kind of music, So really. if, if she came to you singing something that was very fashionable and very much in the charts, now something that was dance or something like that, you'd be keen? Well, I wouldn't say I would be keen, no, because I'm not really just interested in trying to have a hit record. I'm, you know, my whole time, I've only been interested in developing mm. artists with long-term careers. So the short-term hit isn't important. Okay, but so you still me, have to have a hit right, to get me, off the ground. Let me come back to you just before I move on. Yeah. That's an interesting point. So you, as far as you are concerned, though, you wouldn't think that you would want to work with Lindsay uh, as a long-term project? No, but if I, th if, I th if I thought that she had long, real long-term potential, then I would want to work with her, regardless of whether I thought the song that I just heard was a hit single. Okay. Tony, you said earlier and uh, and Eric sitting next to you of course well known for uh, for being you know, not a promotional man you take people perhaps like Lindsay and make them into stars well yeah Tony says he thinks it's easier nowadays to get into the business there's more scope right? well, I, I, I think there is because I mean in the in the days in the 60s it was dominated by record companies like Decca and EMI I mean they even they even used to buy up time on Radio Luxembourg in the old days where you it was the only place you could hear pop music and they used to actually dominate the airtime. So now you've got many more uh, radio stations, you've got many more record companies, so it must be easier. Incidentally, I thought Lindsay was great. But aren't they all playing the... I do too, but aren't they yeah. all playing the same sort of music? All the radio stations, oh. they're either gold stations or they're news well, stations, and very little choice. It depends where you are, actually. I mean, in London, there's a vast choice, but it's quite right to say in the rest of the country at the moment, uh, there isn't mm. quite so much choice, no. But, uh, I mean, that's coming. I mean, it's, it's always slow in this country to develop. 
You see, I agree with Tony's saying, see, when I was promoting uh, uh, for many years, but when I first started plugging records, there was no Radio 1. I was there before Radio 1 started. And that's why I, the first record played on Radio 1 I promoted, Flowers in the Rain, which uh, Tony right, yeah. played. So I'm the history book, the first plug of them. But, <laughs> and then it was always hard because you had, you know, light pro home service, then you become Radio 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the, and the, mm. and the, uh, and the Pirates. I would feel, you know, I've actually been in the record business for maybe seven or eight years, I'm in the sports world now. But I would personally think it must be easier today because there's all these radio stations, there's all the independent labels. So there's much more for people to go and see, to go... See, in my day, you went to... I worked at EMI for many years, but there was the EMI, there was, they said, Decca, there was RCA, there was a Polydor, which is now, I think, Phonogram, whatever. But there was only four or five record labels you could approach. So and if only... you were starting off today, you'd think you'd be far better... Oh, yeah. Disposed to get people played. I, well, I personally would be sensational, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> for most people, he has to be better because you've got more people to go and yeah. see today. Okay, well, Lindy over there, on the, Lindy Benson on the end, you don't agree at all, do you? I disagree entirely. I think it's much harder today. I think... How can it be harder with all yeah, these... Can't be harder. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. You'll you probably get a deal today, all these independent Yeah, okay, well, excuse here. me for a moment, Eric, yeah, and just, Lindy will tell you. Just one yes. second. Okay. I think it's much harder today. I think the music industry is not about talent and it's not about music. I think it's about right. making money. All the best, all the Purely about, about making money. I rubbish, complete rubbish. I definitely think so. Complete rubbish. About talent. Let's talent will out. Talent let's go will to our win. friend over here. I should have a microphone in my hand, but I, I don't have it in here. But uh, somebody will find it, and uh, here we go. Right. Uh, my name's Mike Nichols. I'm a freelance journalist for some of the heavier papers. Yeah. The big changes in the record business have been video, which means an artist has to be visual as opposed to just musical, which means you get a lot of one-hit wonder bimbos who might look good might got get on MTV first time round, and then, you know, they're gone forever. Are we in danger of losing the longevity that we used to have? Well, we have because record companies will not invest. It is so expensive for a record company to promote a single with a video mm. on the radio stations and all the rest of it that they won't make that long-term commitment to over five albums, which, say, companies like Virgin did in the early 80s. But Chris says he is prepared to do that now. Well, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll have to see, yeah. because everybody says they're prepared to do it, but so many of these companies have started up out of the ashes of other companies and, you know, nothing's really happened. OK, where are the guys... Hang on just for a minute. Where are the guys from HMV? There's some guys in here from HMV in the, in the second row. All right, now, what, what, what is selling? Is it only one sort of music that's selling? Is, are the record companies not giving enough product? What? In a sense, they're giving too much. And the fact that they... they I, I agree with the, the gentleman there entirely, that they, they, they want a very quick, quick response. And if they don't get it, they'll give you the next one. And if they don't, that one doesn't work, they'll give you the next one. But having said that, there's an awful lot of, of new products still coming through. We did we have seen it from the Brits, you know, mm. Dina Carroll, Gabrielle, and the likes. The, the product is coming through. Um, but I, I also agree with the gentleman over there who was saying about radio. Um, you do need a, a, the radio because people have got to hear it. Unless they hear the product, um, they're not, they're not going to buy it, quite simply. David Ambrose is over here. David is uh, well known in the music business. He uh, signed the Sex Pistols, worked with Duran Duran. Um, lots of excitement. Is the excitement still... Are we going to be able to get you over here? Or, or, mm. Yeah? I'll come over here. Uh, is the excitement, do you think, still in the music business? Oh, yes. It's, I think it's a generic thing, and I think it's always turning around. And I think uh, the press do quite a lot in terms of perpetuating... The myth. Sorry, David, you have a microphone there. I just noticed it. Right, no, OK, no. carry on. No, carry on wow. talking. Yes, go on, go on. But anyway, the press do quite a good job in keeping that momentum going, i.e. the way they, they got behind Suede. Mm. And that was a terrific boost to the music business, in a sense, because it was looking a bit dull then. Yeah. And uh, suddenly the press got right behind that band. And I think it generally helped that band get into the charts. Do you think we need more younger people in the record business? I mean, I, I, yeah. no disrespect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but we've you know been in the bit. Tony, we're talking before. Tony's been in the business thirty years this year as a, a record fun, player. To be honest with you, Joe, I think the fun's gone out of it a bit. Everything, everybody's taking it so seriously now. I know it's a big money-making machine, but I mean, <coughs> I think the fun has gone out of it. In the in the early days, there were loads of parties. Everybody was having fun, mm. and, and now look at them. I mean, look at this lot here. What a miserable lot of people! But it's, and this is the record industry, for God's sake. Not me. Not I mean, me. not you, Eric. But the problem yeah. is, I mean, you, the he, problem Eric's is, it's a more serious fun. business. Look, he's got the jacket. Come over here. This is Ed Ball. Now, Ed, Ed, you're a young, enthusiastic record uh, company man, aren't you? Ed Ball Creation Records. Yeah. Home yeah. Primer Scream Ride. <laughs> We're having parties, we're having fun. The thing is, if I, if I was Why a kid... Why are people so miserable here today? Well, I was, just, very... I was just going to say that if I was a kid and I was watching this programme, I, I, I'd be depressed because I'd be thinking there's... There, no there chance. Doesn't, well, yeah, but there are chances. I mean, if you're talented, good. if you're good, if you've got faith yeah, and if yeah. you've got belief, then you will do it. And uh, I 
don't think you necessarily go and need to, to see a solicitor or, or a lawyer first off. I think what you need to do is find a pal or someone who believes in your talent, who believes that you're good, and will go into offices and demand to be seen. Yeah. That, I think, is the most important thing. OK, so where, where are the big record... Are the big record companies letting the music business down? Yeah, I think they are. I think they are. The but you're a why, small record company, yeah, so are, perhaps you would say that. Uh, well, I'll say it because I know that we've got a much better understanding of what pop music means in the 90s than, than the majors do. Um, I think, and, and the reason for that is because... What are the record company A&Rs looking for now? What do you think they're looking for? What are you looking for? What we're looking for is good music, good songs, um, excitement. That's very subjective. What is good music? Promise, is it what's Green happening Ride, now? Teenage or? Fan Club, yeah. Saint Etienne. Things like that's that. good music that's happening now. What about yeah. good music that will survive? Will that survive? Will they be doing stuff in 10, 15 years' time? We believe it time? will survive. We believe it will. But, um, I, mean, as, I mean, let's talk about people who are watching the programme. I mean, it's like... I mean, the most important thing is, is, is that they're, they're encouraged, that people in, in Britain are encouraged to, to, to keep making music. So you would disagree with Chris over here? You would say, no, you don't need to get your, soli your solicitor, lawyer, whatever. You, we've got one over here in a suit, funnily enough, and uh, we've got one in the back, I found out earlier. It's not a question of disagreeing with Mr Wright. I think it's a question of <laughs> that... Uh, I think that the, the goalposts have moved yeah. and, and that... Um, I mean, I still remember the importance of pop music when I was 17 and yeah. how, how I felt about about music. Well, I remember there used to be a buzz on the street. There used to be a feeling. You used to walk past shops in Carnaby Street just outside and there was a lot of noise, a lot of music, a lot of, a lot of excitement. Yeah. And there doesn't seem to be that now. No. Tony. So, can I say one thing? I think it's not only the record industry, but it's also radio stations take themselves too seriously. Uh, everything's controlled by computer nowadays, you know, every record shuffle this way and that way. And uh, I think that at that side of it, and also you've got to also appreciate the fact that youngsters nowadays they're all into computer games as well. Yeah, so yeah. the whole thing is different now. I don't know what that's. But like. I, you don't agree? Hang on, we've got to come back over here just before we go to the games, break. Yeah. No, <coughs> remind us who you are. Hello, uh, my name is Montash. I'm from Shakedown Sounds Management. Right. And basically, I'd just like to say, are you one of the new hot sort of as a one of the hot suits in from new music now? Well, I, I manage quite a lot of talented yeah. people, and I just find it quite difficult to understand. Like we've got a man here from an independent label who'll understand and the music and then we've got some people over there mm. who are not in the clubs who are not on the scene who don't know what's going yeah, on yeah but not every I young mean, person is in the club not every young person likes that absolutely. sort of music it, are we in danger of saying only music that's danceable is music that's going to be popular not, not, not necessarily just good music is not being exported it's not being signed up in this country rather it's been brought in from other countries and we're listening to them we're not basically you know taking the responsibility of promoting british bands okay have we got no real maybe we have no talent maybe Maybe the musical people in this country are just not up to it. Well, they're just not up to it because I don't think they've got the guts that they used to have in the 80s and 70s. Who hasn't got the guts? The, the people record companies. They don't have the guts to can, sign bands up. Can I just oh, make, I make the rubbish, point? I think a point that Chris was making earlier on about long-term deals, I think the George Michael case, which is soon to be mm. decided, will be an interesting one because if that contract is deemed unfair, um, then it, it was a long-term contract. One of the issues involved is that it was a long-term yeah. contract time. We can't in. go into an individual case like that, but yes, no. I, understand, I understand what you're saying. Yes, and but it will become easier for bands okay. to get deals because companies like Chris's but won't there are a lot sign of, them up long-term. There are a lot of shouts of rubbish over there. And, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Take the case of Radiohead. That's a talented band. And no one really got behind that band when they first were put out. And they get pushed in America. And they do. They sell a lot of records through the college radio in the States. What could we learn come in back, this country? Come back here, they put out creep. Record company really knows it's going to work. What? And it goes. OK. We're going to take a, a break. Ton. We'll be back in a moment. Uh, oh, no, we're not going to take a break. We're going to have some music, first of all. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have some music. I was getting so excited and uh, listening and carried away. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe our next, uh, next guest, they're not signed either. Chris, we'll, uh, we'll ask you to, uh, to look at this and uh, maybe you will enjoy this. This is The Hanging Tree and they are singing Wonderland. The way a child sees the world The blank look of innocence The open mouth confusion The illusion of truth The disappointment of youth The vacant stare, the loving look The profits from a children's book Just another human lover With a shit for a father And a mother convenient For comfort and kisses I've got my destination And directions I can follow But where did I get all this luggage? Where did I get all this cargo? What on earth do I know? What on earth 
do I know? The very honest in Wonderland. From the desolation bridges to the wilderness of pavements, to the comfort of strangers and graveyards. Through the mysteries of sex, middle age and cigarettes To a senile old fuck living on the coast I'll be a toothless morning idiot Dribbling in the sand wine. What's on TV? What's on TV? As if it really mattered As if I wouldn't just sit there and watch grass grow From the window of some hideous post-war bungalow What on earth do I know? What on earth do I know? Bury all the in Wonderland Well it's winter in that seaside town That was only built for summer Arcades are for echoes now The pavement's just for rain Those tattooed tourists All consumption white skin All dicks and dykes and Friday nights Their palms unread Unable to get a single girl into bed They go home Back to small towns and suburbs With a souvenir from Bournemouth Pier And a sense of failure Still holding on to something That isn't cheap or hollow That does not judge today And will not judge tomorrow What on earth do I know? What on earth do I know? I'm the very oldest in Wonderland Things I have collected that ever I've rejected have burnt or forgotten or left to decay in grey and dismal places. I remember their names but not their faces. I just need a religion that hands out forgiveness and mercy that does not require tambourines or worship. The know things that I can never, never know. The sea's beauty though the skies may be showing. The sea's hope where it appears there's only sorrow That gives directions even an idiot like me to follow What on earth do I know? What on earth do I know? A very honest and wonderful land Okay, that was the uh, hanging tree, and I'm almost loath to say this. I, I should ask uh, Chris what you thought of that, really, just before we go. Did you enjoy that? Well, I loved it. It's my kind of music. And a lot of uh, Tony whispered to me, he said, "That's John Lennon." I said, "No, no, it can't be." Well, I thought it was great. You enjoyed that? Yeah, really. Yeah? I'd, li I'd like to. I'd, I'd like. I'd definitely like to hear a tape of. You know, everything else you've got. Agent. I'm, I'm your in. agent. <laughs> okay, well there we are. I'll get you a tape on Monday. <laughs> we'll um, we'll come back, and some people may say, "Was that really very 60s?" And is that going to happen? I know our friends over here put a dance beat to it and say that'll be a hit. But uh, we'll come back. Final part of the program. More music, but first the competition. Oh eight nine one nine hundred double oh seven, and there we are, right on the screen. And now. Uh, the question, what is the name of the British Music Awards? The Grammys, the Brits, or the Rock and Pop Awards? Phone that number anytime until midnight on Sunday and come right back after the break. Talking now uh, a whole lot about the uh, music business. 
The worst thing in the world about doing this sort of job is when the floor manager comes along, and we don't have the celebrity floor manager tonight because we thought that would get in the way. The floor manager comes along and says, lots of whoops and cheers. And everybody, I don't... <laughs> Mansfield, I'm sorry about this, so just take a little break. Um, OK, if this is coming up because you don't like that shot of me, Mansfield, why is it the cue the music shoots continually in that soft... Fo I don't like that shot either, in soft focus. You know, I prefer this one over here. Thank you, that's better, that's my, my best side. Talking about the music business, let's go back. We have uh, two guys, um, and because so many people here, I can't remember everybody's names, but from Air Studios, you've got a new studio, haven't you? Yep. It's uh, £14 million pounds worth, I think, is that right? Mm -hmm. Uh, what sort of bands are going to be playing in there? Well, we get we get all the top bands come into our studio. I think I think the thing you can say about the recording studio industry is that it's it is now very expensive to make a record in a top <coughs> London studio or anywhere in the world. But I'm told that sort of dance stuff and and, and some of these records are made for a, a few thousand pounds off a home computer. Oh yeah, they can be made at home. This is this is what happens. I think it's it's very easy for kids now to make records. They don't have to go into a demo studio anymore to make their records to send to a record company. They can literally go home after watching this show, they can go upstairs and make a record. It literally can be done that way. Yeah, but where can they go from there? That's the problem. Oh, then they have to get it to the record company and then they have to make <coughs> the album. They can either make the album at home or in a friend's studio or they can come into a studio like one of the many in London, all around the world, and make, you know, the proper recording that will be sold all around the world, mm. and which the record companies can look to to keep for years and years and be able to reissue in the years to come, hopefully. So, if somebody came to you, maybe one of the bands on the on the show tonight, or somebody else, somebody watching it, if they came to you and you thought they were good, would you give them some free studio time? Well, we try not to. We try <laughs> not to. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. I yeah. knew what you'd say. I just thought I'd ask. We have given some bands an opportunity, you know, if, yeah. we, know, if we know the right people, but we, we try not to do that because it's unfair on all the others and it's unfair on the bands that have paid. Okay. Carol Wilson. Uh, Carol, you set up uh, Virgin Publishing. You set up Din Disc. Uh, you now run Equator Records. It seems it's a little disparaging for a lot of people, perhaps, who are watching tonight. They're worried. Now, is there any chance? I mean, is it worth doing anything or just sitting back and waiting for somebody to spot you somewhere? I think, I think there's much more chance now because there's so many independent labels. I mean, originally when I started, there were really just a handful of majors that you could get a deal with. But a lot of the independents are being bought up or, or a lot of shares from, from major record companies going into the independents just so, presumably, so they can control them. Yes, but they don't get bought up until they've broken some bands. And that's all the new bands need to worry about. Mm. If they get bought up by a major after that, the bands will probably benefit because they'll get more money. So um, I, I think it's easier. I think also, I think one of the problems is that for people to just send off tapes to record companies is not putting much effort into it and it doesn't work. And I've always thought the best way to try and get a deal is to start close to home with the local press, local mm. shops. If you can't get the people really close to you interested in your act, then the public aren't going to be interested in it either. And then the, the, they will put the word back to the big record mm. companies. Let me go to Mickey Graham in front of you, Mickey. I mean, you, you've sat pensive and quiet. Yeah. Nicky Graham, I'm sorry, Nicky. <laughs> Let me go to you. You sat pensive and quiet all through the programme. Uh, thinking. What are you thinking? I want to know what you were thinking there. Well, I think everybody has a point in this room and everybody's right. The only problem is that the, the major record companies have to pick the best. They pick the cream of the crop. I should say you're a exploit. producer. I'm I mean, a producer yeah. but I used to work for a record company. I was an A&R man at, mm. at CBS for 10 years. And the major record companies can only pick a small amount of the, of the available talent that, that there is out there. So the great thing about this industry is that, that you are able to go to a smaller label, you're able to even create your own label. You can manufacture your own records. But don't you need a lot of money out. to do that? And how do you get a distribution deal? I mean, that's if the you take, biggest problem. If Who's you take Right Said Fred, for example, they went to the bank and yep. they borrowed money and they made a record. They pressed up some records. Yeah, but they were unusual. Those guys yes, were are very together. And I mean, they're, they're not everybody. If you're a musician, more often than not, if you're a musician, uh, then you don't have a head for business. Well, then you get a manager. And what Chris was saying about uh, going to a lawyer, I don't necessarily ag agree with that that's the only route. I think you should go to the management companies. Mm. There are a lot of management companies who will readily open the door to, to new artists. There are a lot of record producers like myself who will, the door is always open to new mm. acts. And we then filter 
what's good and then pass it through to the record companies in the same way. I should give so, you some of the boxes and boxes of tapes to take away after the show tonight. That's what I think I should do. Let me come back to Chris. I mean, you, you, Chris, you, you were saying before, you've got a band, uh, a new band that you signed to your label. Mm -hmm. And they're here tonight. Where are they? They're sitting up the back. Are they? Mel Zoo. Okay. Let me ask you. This is, how did you... No, right up, right up. Can we, get, can we get in there? I think we can. There we are. Uh, how difficult was it for you to get a deal? Well, I've been playing... Um, venues and pubs and clubs for four four years uh -huh. and um, you know it's it's taken a long time but you know it's worth it and mm. anyone can do it if you've got the talent and the charisma and the willpower to do it yourself really I mean some may say Chris that uh, that you were a, a small independent you were at the forefront perhaps of independent music right in the early days and you've now become perhaps uh, one of those people who's making it difficult to get in I mean is that unfair comment well it is it is really because uh, Chrysalis Records was sold to EMI and the Chrysalis Group's new record company is Echo and this is what we're doing with uh, Mel and Zoo, so we're going right back to basics, mm. to coin a phrase. Can I go, as we come to the end of the programme, can I go to second row, guy with a very long hair? Uh, now, y you're, you're into, you want heavy metal, more heavy metal music. It's the biggest, heavy metal is the biggest selling music, isn't it? I hate that word, you're already, you? uh, yeah, it's really okay, pigeonholing. Okay, what should we use it? Should we just call it rock music. music. Okay, rock music, go. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, I think the guy from Creation over there was talking about, you know, putting a beat to things and dance. Yeah. Um, everybody wants a Bon Jovi on their roster, but what the majors are now doing, they're all running for cover and, and, and loading their rock bands. You look at uh, a band called The Almighty on Polydor, yeah. uh, they've been dropped. A great British band, talented band, have been dropped. Uh, Little Angels on their way out, the same record label, offloading. No one's prepared to sort of invest the money. And uh, the, the little independent labels like ourselves at Roadrunner, you know, we're prepared to look after... Um, you know, the inspiring yeah. rock acts. And, of course, then the majors come along once we've developed them and steal them from us because, of course, the band and the managers say, yes, we'll, have, we'll take the money. Thank Sorry, you I, I was, uh, while you were talking, I was getting in, in the way of some of our very few cameras here tonight. But, uh, Ed, <laughs> do, you, do you agree or not? Um, yeah, I do agree. But, um, but something, that, something that's been... I've been questioning in my mind for the, for the last five, ten minutes is mm. a lot of people talking about independent labels. Um, there aren't that many independent labels because the whole independent structure has been dismantled in the last five, ten years. Good or bad thing? Like, well, it's a bad thing because things like rough trade distribution have gone down. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there is only one major distributor, independent distributor left, and that's Pinnacle. And uh, it's not that easy to set up a label. And so all these people are saying, like, go and set up your own label because someone will distribute. It's very difficult to get a distribution deal. So uh, the way... I mean, the, the, the thing about setting up your own label... Mm. Okay, fine. Mm. Thank you. I'm going to walk in front of this camera now. Is that okay? Can I walk in front of that? All right. I don't like that. Must get a, must get a haircut. Right. Uh, I think it's time to go for our final piece of music tonight, and uh, I'll probably come back for a third time, Chris, to you, and uh, see what you think. And uh, um, I think you'll enjoy this. This is unusual and different. This is Storyville, and uh, they're a duo, and they're singing better than this.
pinch myself and I'm calling you, calling you. Would it ever, would it ever get better, be better than this? Oh, could it ever, would it ever get better, be better than this? Last night I touched her breasts for the very first time. She smelled of blue and tasted like Coca-Cola. She put a tongue in my mouth. I thought that I would die like this. Oh. Thank you guys. That was uh, unusual. I think Eric thought that you were singing about him, I must admit. I, I, I have to... I say, I've asked everybody else. I, I must ask Chris uh, about this last one. That's unusual, different. Chris, uh, what, well, do you, what do you think? Certainly the breast that uh, tasted of Coca-Cola and smelt of brute. That is certainly Melody very unusual. Melody Rhoda would love that one. Yeah. Is that... I mean, is that, that's different and it's unusual. I'm not suggesting that we've played the sort of... or had the sort of bands that are representative of everything. We haven't have a, a, had a... Uh, a rock band on, and not to use heavy metal, and we haven't had a dance band on anything else, but we, we try to give a, a sort of selection of some of the things that are out there. Would you just laugh if they came and, and, and present I, you with a tape saying, I, you know, I touched her breast for the very first time, uh, thought, she I, smelt of brute and tasted <laughs> like Coca-Cola? I thought it was going to be a really sensitive love song. I was really looking forward to it. No, it's good. Okay, like come back it. over here. I come back like over here. <laughs> this is Dr. Excuse me. This is Dr. Denise Stanley over here, right? And uh, you have, I hope, a little word of encouragement for some people. So straight in and tell us what you do. Right. Well, we run courses about the music industry at the City University, um, and also by distance learning. And one of the real needs is for information. Young bands spend hours of energy and time, um, and waste resources by sending demos, putting demos in jiffy bags. And what we do is inform them exactly what they should be doing. Concentrate on developing their talent. Get it out, as Carol said, and to okay. an audience. If, if any of you are interested, you want to find out more about this, uh, drop us a line and we will pass it on to you, right. okay? You know, of course, the, uh, the address. It's uh, Whale on 5 to 7 Carnaby Street, London W1. That'll find us. Uh, there are a couple of, of young people up in the back. Do you feel, I mean, do you feel more sort of elated now as a couple of people from bands at the back or less? You, you got some new ideas how you're going to approach it or not? I've got a couple of new ideas. Um, I'm not, it's not as... Uh, doesn't seem, it, it doesn't seem as nerve-wracking as it initially did. Yeah. But um, I can't remember who it was. But somebody said... Start up your own label and all that yeah, sort of if, thing. If you really believe in yourself, you just have to keep yeah. going for it. Bang, right bang, the way bang. down the line. Yeah. And if, you, you know, if you've got that real talent, then you just I, don't take no from anyone. Just keep on going. Fantastic. My, my view is that if you believe in yourself, if you actually think you've got the talent, if you're absolutely sure that you're going to be the next big star, then all you have to do is get in touch with somebody or you have to record the music and uh, you have to let people hear it, of course, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. I think although some people may feel that maybe they have been perhaps just a little um, disheartened by some of the things people said, if you believe in yourself, you can do it. So uh, send us a tape and who knows what could happen. Have a nice weekend. Join us next week. We have a band called Aardvark on next week. They're going to be very different indeed. And uh, we'll be talking about men's problems. Join us then. Bye-bye. <laughs>